So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for the second session uh, for National Distance Learning Week. I'm excited that you're here. I always learn a lot of things um, when Jennifer presents and always cool new tools to use. So it's really exciting. Um, if we haven't met, I'm Erin Maney and I'm the Manager of Communications and Community Engagement at SUNY Online. Um, and my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jennifer Schlomig to you today. Dr. Schlomig is an Associate Professor at the Fashion Institute of Technology and she's the Assistant Chairperson of the Science and Mathematics Department. She's been a faculty member at SUNY FIT since 2006 and teaches both online and in-person mathematics courses. Uh, Dr. Schlomig completed the Teaching with Technology Certificate program at FIT and she is one of our SUNY Online Teaching Ambassadors. Her research interests include technology and teaching and learning, rapid content generation for mathematics, and mathematical poetry, which always fascinates me. <laughs> She has co-authored an OER textbook in statistics and authored an OER textbook in graph theory. So welcome, Jennifer. We'll get started. Okay, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited because I've never given a talk on how I use Google Forms. Uh, so this talk is about how I use Padlets and Google Forms in some of my online mathematics courses. I don't use them in every course, because it might not be the right fit. But hopefully today, my goal is really to show you some examples in two of my online math courses to see maybe you can use Google Forms and Padlets or, or Padlets. Uh, but I made this quick little chart. I teach different in-person courses and online courses. You can see the main ones I teach are statistics online, mathematical ideas online, and geometry and art. And statistics, I, I love teaching it so much. We do have what I think are fun uh, problems. We do spreadsheets. That's like the fun <laughs> assignment for the students and for me. Uh, all, all of these courses have, I would say, the traditional quizzes, the traditional handout textbook, you know, homework, homework that you submit through the learning management site. But I really want to focus on what I think are like the most fun examples for me, but also for students. So in my mathematical ideas course, I use Google Forms. And that's really going to be a huge part of this, what I'm going to show you, how I use Google Forms in this different way. And I've been teaching at FIT it's 19 years, okay, we're almost at 20. And I've been teaching online for a very, very long time. So almost as long. Mathematical ideas, I took a little hiatus from teaching and I started teaching it again, I would say like maybe two years ago. And because I love technology and just looking at different teaching tools, that's when I decided to kind of redo that course and use Google Forms. So I'm very excited with that. Um, I'm also going to show you some examples of Padlets in my geometry and art course. So I picked those two because I use Google Forms the most in mathematical ideas, and then I use Padlets the most in geometry and art. So we're going to focus on those. And again, you can see I haven't used Padlets yet in statistics. I just don't think it's a good fit for my class the way it is right now. Just honest. <laughs> Okay, so these Google Forms in my Mathematical Ideas course, I could not think of a better name for these assignments. Maybe after showing you a few, um, maybe one of you will suggest a better name <laughs> than Google Forms, but I chose Google Forms because that's how they submit. They submit through Google Forms. Uh, I thought just let's stick to a name so they remember everything else is through Brightspace, they get immediate feedback. Google Forms, they are embedded and there are links in, in the learning management system, but just because they don't get the immediate feedback, that's why I was like, okay, these are Google Form assignments and they're, they're special. So um, in my case, these are mini lessons and activities that are similar theme to the unit we're covering, but different. It's, you know, in mathematical ideas, you can cover a million different topics. There really just isn't enough time. So that's when I thought, let me have these mini activities that are separate, 
where students can learn something a little in a, in a very unique way. Uh, so that's kind of the idea behind my Google Forms. And here I have samples. I have magic squares. And I think most of you have heard of magic squares. Um, and I have that as my fourth Google Form. And I pair it with units. So my fourth unit is number theory. I was like, OK, close enough <laughs> using numbers and magic squares, number theory. My third is, uh, has anyone ever played the game set? Have you heard of it? Oh, Roberta has. OK, but I will share with you, Erin, later. It's one of my favorite games. My kids love it. And it's set in Sudoku in my unit set theory, which they're different. But I'm like, OK, that has the name set in it. Let's put it there. And the second Google form is problem solving. And that's in my problem solving with patterns unit. So you could kind of see how I find a place for these things. And while I have these banners out, I just wanted to mention, I really, I, some talks that I have given in the past are about trying to make students feel comfortable in mathematics courses. And I think, you know, taking a little bit of time to create banners um, or graphics, or just connecting to students really makes a big difference in, in the online students, especially in a math class where students can feel, you know, a bit anxious. And I made these banners, you know, whatever it was two years ago when I started redoing my course. And uh, I started using Canva. I'm, that's my new thing. I'm going to have to try to give a talk on how I use Canva. Um, it's very simple for adding alternate text. Like it took me maybe one second using Canva to generate uh, alternate text in this, and just editing it a little. But I use these banners in the Google Forms as the headers. I use them when I post the grades to draw students' attention. So they're getting to see these images. I think having them just gets the student attention. And I think it just shows the students that I'm excited and that I'm making these graphics for them. <laughs> so I make good use uh, of them. I think it's worth it if you have you know, a minute to make graphics and edit those Google form banners because it's unique to just you and your class. So just had to mention that really quickly. <laughs> um, so how it works, there's many places in my course where it explains what you have to do in the syllabus, in the course information, in every single assignment. I have a course fact blog where <laughs> students can go if they are confused with anything, have questions, message me. Um, but these directions for how Google Forms work were from the course information, like right before anything started. So what the students are asked to do is enter some data into this Google Form. They have to use, I'm at SUNY FIT. So they all have a SUNY, they all have an FIT Google account. So they have to use that. And they do these mini assignments. And I tell them, you know, after the first two data collections, you'll be used to it. And there are little mathematical activities that are on their own. So you could see Erin um, mentioned that uh, my interest in mathematical poetry, I love Fibonacci poetry, and that's one of the forms that I have, golden ratio. And for these, I really want students to get a perfect score on them. In order to get a perfect score, I just think you, the students need to read directions carefully, and then they can ask me before they submit to look things over for them. As long as they give me 24 hours notice, I am more than happy to look over any assignment in any of my class. It just sometimes students do not take advantage of this, <laughs> but I really try to remind them, please, you know, let me know. I'm happy to check your work. I want you to do the best you can, especially with these Google Form fun assignments. And I always have no late homework will be accepted no matter what. So, um, so in the course site, we're using Brightspace. I think everybody is now using Brightspace at SUNY. 
the students really um, should be clear where to do to find their Google form assignment. Again, I have a, a little banner here to just draw attention to show them what they're going to expect in this folder. Google form assignments for me are um, they're the first assignments that my mathematical students do in a unit. A unit is about two weeks in my courses and in mathematical ideas. Their, my assignments are due Thursdays. So they have about a week to submit a Google form. And then you could maybe see down there, it says handout textbook assignment. That would be due the last day of the unit on Thursday and a quiz. Okay, so they can start off the module doing what I hope is like a fun, quicker little assignment that they don't have, they didn't have to go through the lectures in order to complete it. And I have in here the instructions, the submission, and then again, like embedded submission. So even in the instructions and assignment, when you scroll down, you'll see that banner that I was showing and it'll say, are you ready? Time to submit. So they have three chances to find where to submit the <laughs> assignment. So it should be clear where you're gonna submit this Google form assignment. Okay, so this is just a little snippet of the problem solving. If for some reason students skip instructions, they will not get a perfect score, right? All the information to answer these questions or do the activities is in the reading part first. I always have like a reading or activity, but here you can see, this is what the submission form looks like on a form. On top, you'll have the banner. It'll say which number. It'll remind you of like points. Please let me check your work. And then they answer questions about what they learned. But they have to actually read the instructions first or else they might get it wrong. So it does happen sometimes that I get low scores and, I'm, and then I wonder what happened. And I believe it's because they skipped the instructions part and went straight to fill out a form. All right, so I wanted to give different ideas of Google Forms. So this one, the problem solving with patterns, they all start in the same way. This is a screenshot from a Google Doc, and it'll always have which assignment it is, what the topic, and please read it carefully before you submit before the deadline. It'll tell the student what you're going to be doing. So in this particular one, they're just working through this Google Doc. They don't have to do any other activity. Like they're not playing a game, they're just reading through and they're learning about problem solving. And um, I'm trying to talk to the students, even though it's in words, like I'm individually talking to them. So I just wanted to spend a minute just reading a little bit of this, just so you can see how I you know, interact with the students for an example. So this one is problem solving. And I wrote to motivate them also, all of us experience problem solving in our daily lives. Sharpening your problem solving skills is useful for various situations, including work. Many employers assess their applicants problem solving skills and so on. And you may previously associate problem solving with stress, but it could be enjoyable. And I wrote for real. And then I mentioned a little about me, how I grew up doing logic puzzles or like doing math for fun. And that's because my dad is a math professor. Um, but, you know, just sharing a little bit about me and also the motivation. And then I added that before having kids, I used to love playing problem solving games. And then I just did a screenshot from one. And I said, why don't you see if you can figure this out? And then I have uh, the YouTube video of the solution. Okay, so just try to start with a little motivation of why we're doing this Google form. And then when you go down, you get into the more math part of it. <laughs> so that's you know what the students are seeing. They should do the instructions first and then they're ready to submit. Okay. Now, I, now I'm gonna talk about why I love using it as the instructor. To me, this is the absolute fastest thing to grade that doesn't grade automatically. 
So I have my quiz, I have other homework that grades automatically through Brightspace with my questions and gives feedback. But this, in all my classes, I have one assignment where I grade things manually and give like extra feedback to my students just to try to interact and connect with them. So when you have a Google form, the responses can come out in different ways. And one of them is a spreadsheet. So I blocked out names and things because of uh, FERPA. We don't wanna share student information. But in these Google Forms, I mentioned how students have to use their FIT email. So I have the email addresses for students. And you can see it's quite quick, at least the math problem part, to figure out where someone made a mistake, right? Because you get a whole bunch of answers in a column. If something is different, and actually Google Forms does do it automatically, it can, but I do it manually because I'm reading down what students are writing. And what I do is I go down to the student's email and I will send every single student an email before the assignment is due. Just because Google Forms, it takes a minute to look at in grade. I mentioned the assignments are due on Thursdays. I check Tuesday and Wednesday and I send individual emails to students who have something wrong. I really like this because I feel like students are, you know, they see that I really, I want them to do well. I say, you know, you did get one wrong or you got a few wrong. These are the ones you got wrong. You are welcome to reply to this message and redo before the deadline. Okay, so I'm just reaching out to them. And I also reach out to students who've gotten everything perfect. I think that's a nice little email to get too, but for those I group it. So usually students get perfect scores. I will send a group message on Tuesday, like, you know, just letting you know, I really thought you did a fantastic job on this assignment. You're gonna be getting 10 out of 10 once I submit the grades. So I really, I like that. And I hope that the students like that too. Um, I wanted to show you this a little bit bigger just because this assignment is completely different than the previous one. This one I had students play set, play Sudoku, and they had to take screenshots of their set game. They had a choice of two different websites. They could have played a daily puzzle or they could have played like a full game. They had to screenshot me after playing for a little bit or if they completed successfully the game, that's part of the assignment. And then you could see these numbers here. That was about um, Sudoku, like figuring out the missing cell. And then they got credit just letting me know what they thought of it, which I really like, I appreciate it. And these students are honest, <laughs> okay? So some of them say like, I was not a fan. Someone said very hard, um, but I really like these messages. It helps me like understand. And sometimes I'll get something that's really, I don't know, it makes me feel better. Someone wrote over here for Sudoku. I really liked it. And it reminded me of my mom. She loves Sudoku. Um, one person wrote for set, it was fun once I got the hang of it, but definitely a bit challenging. The game was fun, but frustrating at the same time. I would play again. That's exactly what I wanna hear. So I'm trying to give assignments that are like a little bit frustrating, but you get a reward. And also I think it's you know fun if you can play a game in a math class and get credit for it as an assignment. So just to show you some answers. And while I give students the chance to um, redo if they have something wrong, I have it set that you could only fill out the form once. So students are welcome to redo any mistakes when they reply to the email that I sent them individually, okay? I do that for a couple of reasons. One is if a student, you know, they have a lot going on, they don't remember if they did their assignment, they will see this screen that they've already responded, they've already done it. I used to have them be able to answer multiple times. And then I would get the same student responding many times. <laughs> so I think if you are gonna use Google Forms to have it set that it's only once, but that doesn't mean that they could only do it once. I really like in 
emailing the students and saying, you can re redo your mistakes by replying to this message. Okay, so just that, I just wanted to be clear. I do really recommend the only once. Okay. So just to wrap up Google Forms and then a little bit on Padlets, I, I really like the one-on-one -on -one interaction that I have with Google Forms and I use them as the separate assignment, which I still, if you think of a better name than Google Form Assignments, I also use them in every single course. So I use them in statistics, geometry and art of design, and mathematical ideas in other ways too. I use them for extra credit to get feedback from students, especially in mathematical ideas. I want to know which topics do they like? Which topics did they not like? How did you feel about the course? Stuff like that. And I give them like an extra point on their exams just for filling this out. And one time many years ago, I used to teach logic and students did not like the <laughs> topic, which is fine because there's so many other topics. I was able to say, okay, you know, I want students to enjoy the course. I'm going to switch out logic for graph theory, something like that. So I think you can use Google Forms in every way, um, but now I'm gonna talk about Padlets and that's more of a community activity, the way I do it. And I, so we're gonna look at my geometry and the art of design class. Okay. So students have no issues using Padlets usually and neither do I. I think they're super user-friendly, they look great and I haven't found um, a LMS that it doesn't work with. You can embed Padlets. You can, I know on Brightspace, you could even have like your grading hooked up to Padlets. You could just link to a Padlet. I think, you know, you see, I really, I want students to have options of what they're comfortable with and also that they have no excuse. They, they will find the homework. They will find a way to submit. So I personally do... Um, embedded Padlets and links to the Padlet too. So <laughs> they have it in two ways. And with Padlets and Google Forms, like I was showing you, they both have timestamps. So if you're like me and you have, you know, hard strict deadlines, the, I mean, students can submit whenever they want, but they're gonna lose points or get a zero if it's after the deadline. On Padlets, you just click and it'll tell you the time that it was done. For Google Forms, it'll tell you next to the email address the exact time students submit. So they're both really great for you know, deadlines and due dates. For, uh, these are just completely different than Google Forms, the way I use Padlets. Students are looking at each other's work. So, because they're looking at each other's work, I think that they submit things that are the best quality. Well, you would hope that they would submit better quality because they know others are going to be looking at it. But just to make sure, I also have little extra credit bonuses for these Padlet assignments. So let me just show you a sample one. Can you see this Padlet? Is it showing up, Erin? Okay. What happens with Padlets is at first, I have it all on private. So nobody can see each other's posts. I need to make sure before I approve posts that the students did what they were supposed to do. So sometimes I just had an assignment due last night and they had to do isometry and a student didn't do that. They just Googled isometric design instead. Anyway, <laughs> um, so in order for me to unlock the post, they have had to have done it correctly. Then they have a choice. They can sign in using their email address because everyone at FIT has a free Padlet account, or they can be anonymous as long as they write their names somewhere. Usually students write their names where I have these letters but I make the voting anonymous. So students who want to have their name showing, they log in and have their name on top, but everybody gets the letter. 
if somebody has like a title for theirs, I'll leave their title. So this person said Care Bears. It's a little hard to see. Let me make it big. So you can see the student made this really nice Care Bears design. And that's what a Padlet looks like. It's very simple to use. Anyone can click on it here. Uh, I try to make the little icons based on whatever, whatever this assignment is. I re remind the students, you need to write your name somewhere so I know who you are <laughs> to get credit. I think that's the hardest part is sometimes students forget to put their name on it. Uh, and I write, don't worry, no one will be able to see your work until I change your name to a letter for the voting. So this is just what a Padlet looks like, for example. Okay, let me go back to here. So they know that students are going to see their work. They also know what I expect, the quality, because I give them samples from previous semesters. I have uh, a post about it in my course fact blog. I, they can find questions or answers to anything, hopefully in the course that they want. And one of them is, can you give me examples from a previous semester? I say, sure. If any students come to my office hours, even if they don't ask, I show them because my office is full of, you know, designs. Students can make physical designs and then upload them. It didn't have to be just ones that were made through the computer, which I just show, uh, showed you. And I think Padlet's really up the quality. And that's what I want. I want students to really do something that they're proud of and other students are like, wow, that was really wonderful. And a lot of students, they do tell me like, oh, I can't believe that student did this. It was really cool. And they, you know, they get ideas. So besides for that, um, and I do motivate them in other ways by giving them bonus on exams. <laughs> so um, they, I had those letters that I showed you and I'll explain it a little bit more, but students vote on their favorite assignment and whoever wins gets plus one on the next exam. That's part of the homework grade. And I think it's really just like this nice little course community to look at each other's and decide on a favorite. Sometimes there's a tie and that's fine. Then two people can get plus one. I think a few times there's been three, <laughs> three way tie. That's also fine. So I think it's really a nice thing to do. And I, I do not vote on these. This is just the class awarding one of the students points. So I think that's a special thing that they get to do to work together with. They cannot vote for themselves. That's one rule. <laughs> and um, the home, these Padlet assignments are 10 points. And just by voting, you get one point. So there will be somebody who forgets to do the work forgets to post or does it incorrectly, but they'll still vote to, you know, support the rest of the class to try to decide who's going to win. So I do have the grades are usually tens. Then we have somebody, even though I remind them many times, they'll get a nine because they forgot to vote. And then we'll have ones. That's really usually there aren't any zeros for these assignments. Students really, I think, enjoy looking at what others do. Oh no. Okay, one second, because the images are not being nice right now. All right, well, this, it was just showing in the Brightspace site, just like it was for, um, oh, do you see it over here? That's strange. Well, see it on the preview, have, yeah. On the preview, it's working. I don't know, strange, but yeah. it's, the same, it's the same thing where I have, it really clear in the Brightspace course, you know, here's the assignment, here are the instructions. Okay, let me, let me not overwhelm you with this and go just a little bit on how it works. So if you're thinking of having this kind of um, assignment, how I personally do it through steps is students, they post their work on the Padlet, okay? I have my homework assignment, uh, instructions, they have the rubric every module. And besides for the extra credit voted on the class, if they are working really hard on their assignment, they can get little bonus from me as well. 
So like someone making a like long video, they're gonna get an extra point on their test. And that's clearly in my rubric based on how much effort you put that, and if you do the assignment correctly, you can get extra bonus. So these assignments, a student can get plus two on the next exam just by really working hard on this. Hey, oh no, I don't know what happened with the presentation, but it's just bouncing around and things are not really going. Come not on. A mind of its own. It does. Okay. There you go. It's just telling me to hurry up because <laughs> I'm talking too much. Um, so the second thing is the students who posted correctly, then it's time for me to approve the post, change the names to letters um, if they want to keep it anonymous. Again, it's up to them whether or not they want to keep it anonymous. I find more and more students want their names on their assignment. They worked hard on it and they want students to know. So they can log in to their Padlet account if they want their names to show. Then students vote on their favorite through, surprise, a Google form. And I remind them a lot to vote. And then the winners are announced and the bonus is given. I post the homework grades. So I remind them at least twice to vote. I just copied and pasted one um, reminder that I sent to students. I say, now it's time to vote on your favorite creative assignment through this Google form. I'll have a link. This is a part of the creative assignment grade, and it also gives someone the chance to get an extra point on the midterm. And then I say, you know, remember, and it's worth one point. And for the one I copied, I did enjoy looking at all the uh, assignments, and I'm excited to see which is the class's favorite. And I really am excited to see what the class chooses. So every semester, there's different students, different interests, and really like a different uh, things that they look for in assignments. So sometimes I'll have students who do videos and usually students are like, yes, I love the videos. Then other times I have a photography major who does something really cool with photos. You just, you never know what students are going to pick as their favorite. And in my reminder post, of course, you know, I also have a graphic. So I usually put bitmojis of me saying, remember to vote or don't forget. Um, just to really bring attention, please do this for, for the class. So that's how I use Padlets in the geometry and art course. Like it's a huge part of their, their assignments. I do use Padlets for that mathematical ideas course but I use Padlets in a different way. And I just wanted to like super quickly, I know that my timer is gonna go off in, in a minute. Let me just shut it off now. Um, that you can use Padlets in like a low stakes way. Here in my mathematical ideas course, I have an extra credit assignment through Padlet and it stays on private. So. It, the mathematical ideas, I tried it like the geometry and art years ago. It just didn't work for whatever reason. So I said, okay, you know, my mathematical ideas course, this is going to be like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. My geometry and art, you know, because in the name of it, it's geometry and art of design. I think students expect that there will be some designing and some art and working together. But mathematical ideas, it's the same idea where students have to submit creative original work that they have done, but only I see it. And if they do it correctly, then I automatically give them plus one on the next. So I do try to have Padlets in the courses. Um, and I think, you know, to create something original in whatever way the students like, is just like a fun activity. You're actually doing math, but in a way that you wouldn't expect. So um, like I said, there are many different ways to use Padlets and forms. I think every single person can use Google Forms in their courses, like starting tomorrow, if you wanted, because that's a great way to get feedback from students is to use Google Forms. And it did, it helped me change my course. I, I redesigned mathematical ideas from a Google Form. And yep, just, I think, give it a try. And I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to say thank you. And please ask me questions if you have any. <laughs>
Yeah, we definitely have a few minutes left for our questions. And folks can feel free to type in the chat or unmute yourself and have a conversation with Jennifer. Um, there's always some great ideas for these tools. And these are both free tools um, that anyone can use. So you can feel free to um, you know, take a look at them and see how they might work in your class. I hope you got some ideas for that, even if you don't teach mathematics, um, just by looking at what Jennifer does. So are there any comments or questions? A lot of thank you. <laughs> um, we did, you know, people were commenting about, you know, how they could, they thought that these ideas were cool and things that they could use. And I know that we've used Padlets a lot here at SUNY Online as well for different things that we've been um, what ways that we wanted to build collections of things. Um, it's kind of neat too to build a resource for your class or have your students contribute to a resource pa Padlet. Um, so as they're going through your course, if they find um, a, an additional article or find a cool video that relates to a module, they can just kind of collectively be building a Padlet throughout your course. That was another way I saw an instructor do that. So. I like that. I also, you can actually use Google Forms to teach like math topics. In my graph theory class, we, you know, those uh, interactive quizzes where it's like, what would you like out of these? Which would you prefer? Yeah. So showing how to create, a t you know, it's a very long thing to create those kinds of like interactive yeah. quizzes. Students yeah. didn't realize how long those take. Um, but you could use Google Forms in just sure. random ways and Padlets also. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and Google Forms is something, if you haven't used them before, just try making one. I mean, they're pretty intuitive to set up. Um, you know, they give you the different types of question options, and um, I think they're pretty pretty easy to do. And you can drag and drop your questions all over the place, too. And so anyone, can, anyone can email me if they, you know, are confused on how to use a Google Form or a, or a Padlet. And if you are interested in building your own choose your adventure form, which is, you know, graph theory, mm -hmm. you could just Google Google form, choose your own adventure, and they'll have a template there for you. I think Google form has a lot of templates that you can find and help. They do. Yeah, that's a good point. Yep, a simple Google search will get you all of those things. <laughs> Well, that's great. I hope um, it does sound like somebody's going to try to use some Google Forms. It's, it is a great way to get feedback from students. Take an informal poll, um, feedback on the course. It's just really handy. And I like that you can not only in Brightspace can you link out to these things, but I know you can embed your Padlet, right? I think you can do yeah. a form too. You can so embed you go into the sharing settings. As long as you get the embed code, you can put it in the code on your editor in Brightspace. I also use them uh, as an, an admin. <laughs> like I use uh -huh. Google Forms for things all the time. Like when would you like to observe somebody? You know, I just, there's so many different styles that you can use. It's mm -hmm. fun, like people should just play around with what Google Forms can do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We use Google Forms to collect um, topics for National Distance Learning Week and as a person who plans the schedule, that then gives me a spreadsheet of all of the responses. And so I can use that spreadsheet to track um, the scheduling for the week. So, you know, it's just even good for your own personal kind of time management and administrative uses. Exactly. Awesome. Well, I want to close this out with a couple links so that folks know where they can access some information and materials. I want to thank you, Jennifer, as always, for sharing your expertise with our community. Um, I always learn something new when I come to your sessions. And so um, thank you to all who joined us today. We do have our full schedule of sessions for this week on the first link there. And in each day is a link to the Zoom room. It is the same Zoom room. So you can just bookmark this, uh, this Zoom and you'll be easy to get back and forth throughout the week. This is the last session today. We'll be joined again tomorrow morning. Um, and National Distance Learning Week is sponsored by USDLA, the US Distance Learning Association. They um, promote SUNY online events on their website, as well as other events that are happening um, around the country. So I would encourage you to take a look for some other things happening this week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.